In this video, we learn about force. There's so much happening in these video clips. And would you believe that there's not one thing that's not directly related to the topic of force in your textbook? And the thing is, stuff like this is happening around you all the time. And it's the same physics that you're studying in your school curriculum. All the video clips that you just saw will cover these topics from your textbooks. What is force? What causes force? What is magnitude and what is the unit of force? What is the direction of force? What are the effects of force and the types of force? So let's start with the definition of force and then we will explore what it means. A force is a push or pull on an object resulting from the object's interaction with another object. So what are the main things in this definition? There need to be two objects. There needs to be an interaction between them. Here are two objects. Is there an interaction between them? No. So there's no force from that point of view. Now you can see the car moving. Now you can see the car moving again. So both pushing and pulling, there is a force due to interaction between the two objects, man and the car. Here are some everyday activities that we can see where force is in action. Pushing, pulling, lifting, stretching, twisting and pressing. So now we know that force requires an interaction between two objects. Whenever there is an interaction between two objects, there is a force upon each of the objects. When the interaction ceases, the two objects no longer experience the force. But let's see another situation. Here, man is pushing the car, applying a lot of force. But why is the car not moving? Does that mean that there is no force being applied? There is force. But to understand it, we need to introduce the next point. A force is a vector quantity, and that means force has magnitude and direction. In general terms, magnitude loosely means how large something is and direction means where is it going. Therefore, the strength of the force is expressed by its magnitude. The SI unit to measure this magnitude of force is called Newton. In short, it is written as capital N. Force is equal to mass into acceleration. So capital F is for force, M is for mass, A is for acceleration. The metric units of mass are kilograms and the metric units of acceleration are meters per second square. So now when we put them together, force is kilograms into meters per second square. 1 Newton is the amount of force required to give a 1 kg mass an acceleration of 1 meter per second square. To say 10 Newtons of force, we can write 10 N. When two forces act on an object, two main things can happen because either the forces are in the same direction or they are in the opposite direction. These two situations can give rise to a total of three situations because both forces can act in the same direction or both forces can act in the opposite direction but they are of unequal magnitude or both forces act in opposite direction but they are of equal magnitude. What happens if the forces are in the same direction? The resultant force on the box is the vector sum of the two forces. In other words, when two forces act in the same direction, their effective magnitude increases. So if person 1 applies 400 newtons and person 2 applies 400 newtons, then the resultant force is 800 newtons. What happens if the forces are unequal? and act in the opposite direction. If the two unequal forces are applied in the opposite direction, the net force acting on the object is equal to the difference between the two forces. So here one person is pushing with a 800 Newton force and the other one with 400 Newtons. So the net force will be 400 Newtons in the first person's favor and the box will move in the direction where the first person is pushing it. What happens if the forces are equal and act in the opposite direction? Since we've already seen that the net force acting on the object is equal to the difference between the two forces, here the two forces are equal in magnitude, so the net force acting on the object will be zero. If person one is pushing with 800 newtons and two people are pushing from the opposite side with 400 newtons each, then the net force is going to be, you're right, zero. So the car or the box will not move anywhere. The same thing happens most of the time in a tug of war. Mostly the magnitude of pulling force that a big group of people can put on the rope is almost the same as the other group and that's why generally the tug of war takes a long time to move. Let's see here how it works. Here each group is going to pull against the tree and the spring balance will show us whether the force is similar to each other or not. There, both are almost identical. So now let's go back to the point where I asked why is the car not moving if there is force being applied? And I can show using the weighing scale that he is applying force because the scale has moved quite a bit. But then why isn't the car moving? The thing we don't realize here is that the car is applying a large force on the ground due to its weight. 
and the ground is applying the same force back to keep it in place and the system is in balance. This man doesn't have to worry about the balance forces but still has to overcome the frictional forces. So in this case, let's keep adding to the force and this car will eventually start moving. There, a second person has joined in. The additional force got the car to start moving. So we've already understood what is force, how is it caused, how is it measured. Now let's see what are the effects of force. Since force can't really be seen, it can only be judged by the effects it can produce in the objects around us. Force can move a stationary object. Force can stop a moving object. Force can change the speed of the moving object. Force can change the direction of a moving object. The above four points can confirm that force can change the state of motion. The state describes the speed and the direction of the motion. Force can change the shape of an object. After heading the ball, look at his face. Don't you think the shape has changed? This is just for fun. So now let's see what are the different types of forces. We know that forces can be exerted only when the objects interact with each other. But interestingly, they can interact whether they are in contact with each other or even if they are not in contact with each other. Therefore, the types of forces can be broadly classified into two categories, contact forces and non-contact forces. Contact forces act only when the interacting objects are in contact with each other. Non-contact forces can act even if the objects are not in contact with each other. Under contact forces, force is a muscular force. That is a force exerted by muscles in the body, in humans or animals. This includes almost everything that we do. Second is the frictional force of friction. This is the resistance to motion of one object moving relative to another, while both are in contact. So why doesn't the ball keep rolling forever? And why does it roll more on the smooth ground than on the rough or the rocky ground? That's because friction applies a force on the ball that's opposite to the direction of the motion. In the flat ground, there is less friction. So it moves a lot more distance than on the rough or the rocky ground. To show this, we had made a simple thing so that we don't push the ball with different forces so that the ball can roll off with the same speed. Friction is a necessary evil. Without it, we'll not even be able to run or walk. A match lighting up is a good example of friction coming into action. Third is the normal force. The book lying on the table, even though it seems that there is no force acting here, but think about it. Gravity is pulling the book down and an opposing force is still acting on the book to keep it in place. This force is called the normal force. This is the support force exerted upon an object that is in contact with another stable object, which is the table here. A normal force can also be horizontal. For example, if you lean against a wall, you are the object and the wall is the stable object that provides support force. Fourth is the air resistance force and it's a special type of frictional force that acts upon objects as they travel through air. To show this, here a person will run with the umbrella closed and then he runs with the umbrella open to increase the air resistance. You can see the stress on his face and if you don't believe it, you can try it yourself. Fifth is the tension force. This is the force that is transmitted through a string, rope, cable or wire when it is pulled tight by forces acting from opposite ends. Sixth is the spring force. This is the force exerted by a compressed or stretched spring on any object that is attached to it. These are some examples of spring forces. Seventh is applied force. This is a force that is applied to an object by a person or any other object. Before we move on to non-contact forces, if we look at pushing the car again, do know that once any object starts moving due to applied force, if there is no friction or air resistance, it will keep moving without any force required. But it would remain at that constant speed and then to increase or decrease the speed or even to stop it, again some external force would be required. Now we look at non-contact forces. These are the kind of forces that can be exerted by one object on another object even from a distance. Therefore, these forces can act even when the objects are not in contact with each other. First is the magnetic force. This is the force exerted by a magnet. 
A magnet can exert this force without actual contact on iron or other magnets. It can only attract or pull the iron or ferrous objects, but with other magnets it can attract as well as repel it also, which means it can pull or even push the other magnet all without any physical contact. Second is the electrostatic force. This is the type of force exerted by all electrically charged bodies on other charged bodies in the universe. These forces can be both attractive and repulsive in nature based on the charge of the bodies. And this could be either a positive or a negative charge. Electric charges can be produced by friction when one object is rubbed over another one. This electrically charged object is said to have a stationary electric charge or an electrostatic charge. It's also known as static electricity. The force exerted by an electrically charged object is called an electrostatic force. So combing through the hair and rubbing the balloon causes them to be electrostatically charged and when they are brought close to paper or any other balloon, they will exert an electrostatic force on them. If one balloon is charged and the other one is not charged, then they will attract each other as they have opposite charges. If the other balloon is also charged, then it will repel it as both balloons are similarly charged. Third is the gravitational force. This is the pull exerted by objects possessing extremely large mass. It is the force with which the sun, earth, moon or other massively large objects attract one another. The gravitational force between the sun and the earth holds the earth in orbit. And similarly the force between the earth and the moon holds the moon in orbit. And without this gravitational force holding the two bodies together, the moon would simply float away from the earth and similarly the earth would leave the orbit of the sun. The force with which the earth pulls all objects towards it is called the force of gravity or just gravity. All objects on earth experience this force that is directed downwards towards the center of the earth. The force of gravity on earth is the weight of the object. You can't cheat gravity but you can cheat a mind's perception of gravity. I am doing it here, but this is a different topic that we'll talk about some other time. A simple example of gravity is, a ball thrown up would keep going up, but because of the gravitational force acting against the motion, first it slows down the ball till it almost stops in the air and then it reverses the direction and the ball starts coming back to the ground. This reversal and coming back to the ground happens because of gravity. With this we have covered the topic of force, so let's recap. We explored force. It's a push or pull on an object. Most important is force requires interaction between two objects. The SI unit to measure this magnitude of force is called Newton. In short, it is written as capital N. One Newton is the amount of force required to give a 1 kg mass an acceleration of 1 meter per second square. Then we explored direction of force. Forces can be in the same direction or opposite direction. If they are in the same direction, the net force is equal to the vector sum of the two forces. If it's in the opposite direction, the net force is equal to the difference of the forces in the direction of the bigger force. The effects of force are, force can move a stationary object, force can stop a moving object, force can change the speed of a moving object, force can change the direction of a moving object, force can change the shape of an object. Types of forces, in contact forces we have muscular force, frictional force or friction, normal force, air resistance force, tension force, spring force, applied force and in non-contact forces we have magnetic force, electrostatic force, gravitational force. Here's one last look at the subtopics again before we go to the DIY of the lesson. After this is the DIY you can do as a school project related to this topic. After the DIY you can go to the next lesson DIY for force. So I was wondering what subtopic to choose to make the DIY project for this topic of force. I thought maybe it would be good to show the effects of force. So the question is, what can we make or do that has all the elements of effects of force? We need something that hits a stationary object, something that deflects, and all the other points in under effects of force. I thought for a little while about what we can do and suddenly a game came to mind, carom. Now please note one thing. Normally in my videos, I will be making things to show DIY project. But in this first video, I didn't have to make too much because you'll see that the idea itself was good enough to explain almost everything. So think about it, how Karen can show the effects of force. Force can move a stationary object. It's easy to show that force can move a stationary object. 
and in the same one you can see that the force stopped a moving object. Force can change the speed of a moving object. See the striker hits the front wall and slows down a bit but you can't see the change much. So how do we slow down the bounce so that you can clearly see it? Think about it. See the board is made of hardwood so that it bounces well. So how do we slow it down? By putting something soft? I think it'll work. Let's see. I'm adding a small strip of rubber with a double sided tape. Let's see if it slows down after the bounce. It does look like it slowed down a bit but we need to slow it down a little more. Maybe even something softer like foam. Now let's try with the foam stuck with the double sided tape to the front wall. Yes, that's so much better. Force can change the direction of a moving object. That's easy. The striker hits the side wall, the wall applies a force and the striker changes direction and bounces back. Force can change the shape of an object. Now this was tough. I thought about it quite a bit. But then I realized that once again, to change the shape, I need to think of a material that can stay in the change shape so that you can show it to others when you do the project. What is a soft material that changes shape when force is applied and stays in the new shape once the force is gone? Soft clay, plasticine, yes. Let's make a carom coin with it and let's try out and see if it works. There, it works. You can see that it's flattened from the side where it hit the wall as well as the striker. So with carom, we managed to show all the effects of force. But can it also be used to show the types of forces? Let's try the contact forces first. Muscular force. That's easy. The finger has muscles and it's hitting the striker so the muscular force is applied. Frictional force or friction. That's also easy. And those who play carom do it regularly. See when the striker is not moving smoothly because of friction, then powder is sprinkled on the board to reduce the frictional forces acting against the striker and the coins. And see, on the left I will hit it without the powder and on the right I will hit it when powder is on the board. Now the important thing is to be sure that the force that I'm going to use is the same. For that I've made a striker launcher. Let's try it with that. There, you can see that the striker traveled much more where I added powder to reduce the friction. Normal force. The coin resting on the board is good enough. Think about it, I've explained it earlier. Air resistance force. Now this is difficult to show because the striker and the coins are very small. So the air resistance will also be too small for us to see. So we need something that's big enough that causes a lot of air resistance so that you can see it. Now what can that be? Everything looks too small. Did someone say use the board itself? I love the idea. So let's see if the board itself can be used to show that air resistance is a force that affects motion. Let's carry it on a cycle. When we carry it like this, it's easier to cycle as compared to when you carry it like this. You have to believe me on this or judge by the effort that he's putting to cycle forward. Tension force. After all that exercise he just did, I think he got bored of the cycle and he's left the cycle and he's dragging the board on the ground with a rope. And that's good enough to show the tension forces. Spring force. My DIY carom striker doesn't have a spring but it has a rubber band which also does the same job. So that can be a good example of spring force. The DIY of this carom striker launcher can be seen in the videos of the art of science and the link is also given in the description below. Applied force. Lifting the board to take out the coins and moving all the coins and settling them in position is all applied force. Almost anything that you do is applied force. If we could show all these aspects of force using carom, then why not even non-contact forces? Let's try and do that. Non-contact forces, the magnetic force. For magnetic force, we need magnets. So for this, we might as well get some round or donut magnets and we can stick them to the striker and coins with double-sided tape. And what fun. It can be a completely new game. Stronger magnets would be better. But it's still a lot of fun, you can see. Electrostatic force. What was required here? We needed to charge an object. Let's see if the striker can be charged. No matter how much we tried, it was very difficult to charge the normal striker. And we tried with different materials and then we saw that the striker we made with a PVC board was actually getting charged and affecting the confetti. So if we hit the striker, it goes too fast to attract the confetti so we'll just lift it above it. See, it's attracting it. So this way we've also shown electrostatic force. Now to show gravity on the board, mm. I was wondering and suddenly the owner of the board came and took the board away. And as soon as it's lifted at an angle, everything starts falling to the side. Hey, thanks buddy, not only for the board, 
but you also help to show how the force of gravity affects all the coins on the board like it affects everything around us. Things required for the DIY project. Full set of carom, striker launcher, sponge or foam, plasticine or clay, carom powder, cycle with carrier, rope, round magnets, double sided tape or glue, scissors, drill machine with circle cutter, PVC board or WPC, confetti balls. So I hope you've enjoyed this new way of learning. I also hope you've subscribed to the channel and do move on to the next lesson. Our next lesson is on pressure in solids and liquids and the fun will continue there.